Just time restraints, but back to the message. And this is the miracle. After all that I have said about the law of sin and death, and death because of the original sin of the first Adam and God's forgiveness, it has now all come down to this miracle blood that flowed from this miracle body that had a miracle mouth that spoke miracle words, and these are just a few of those miracle words John 3 14 through 17 and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so must the son of man be lifted up that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, right now, even before the time of the judgment, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. He is condemned because he has not believed, which means he has heard it. This person heard it and didn't believe it and refused to believe it and therefore he condemned himself. Now, when this miracle mouth spoke about the miracle blood inside of his miracle body, it spoke these miracle words. Matthew 26, 28. For this is my blood of the New Testament which is shed for many for the remission of sin and speaking on his miracle body the miracle mouth said this is my body which is given for you Luke 22 19 so then we see that the body of the Messiah is a miracle body and his blood is a miracle blood. And he laid down his life on earth to give that miracle body and that miracle blood a perfect offering unto the Lord. The body of the Messiah had no sin and yet it was beaten and battered and humiliated as and beyond the limits of a common criminal. The blood of the Messiah was pure and untainted with sin, and yet it was unrighteously and unjustly and innocently shed and spilt. And this, because he loved us so much that he allowed all this to happen to him as a sheep being led to the slaughter. Hence the Lamb of God. But, all that I have just said is not the end of it. It is the beginning of it. With all that I have said, I hope I have helped you to understand why the blood of Jesus and the body of Jesus is so important. It is born of a virgin. It shouldn't exist. Understand that it should not exist. If the body, if the embryo, if the fetus starts to form blood about eight days after it's born and the life of the body is in the blood, then I'm telling you right now, Jesus should not exist. He had no earthly father. He was adopted by Joseph, but Joseph was a descendant of the royal line of David. So by adopting Jesus, Joseph brought Jesus into the royal line. But since Jesus is God in the flesh, Jesus will live forever. Therefore, reigning on that throne forever. He'll come back to it. He didn't reign on it when he first came. But the people who knew him saw him as the king. Look. We're not underselling the virgin birth of Jesus, okay? That means something. It should not exist. It is different. It is a miracle. I can't stress that enough. This is why it is so important that the body of Jesus be given. 
You see what I'm saying? Some person had to die. The animals was only washed away the sins, but somebody had to die for these sins. And Jesus decided to take these sins upon himself. And the person said, how did Jesus take these sins upon himself? Let me point something out real clear. First of all, when a person back in those days, when a person, according to their law, was a leper, you do not touch them. You distance yourself from them. But Jesus, when the leper came upon him, worshiping him, saying, Lord, if you will, thou can make me clean. Jesus put out his hand and touched the man and made the man clean. The sin of that man was taken upon Jesus so that that man can be made clean. But Jesus himself never once committed sin because touching that man was the work of the Father. It was the revealing of his work on earth. He was doing the will of the Father. This is why he knew no sin. Although he took upon himself the sins of the world. By taking upon himself the sins of the world, he was doing the will of the Father and therefore he was righteous. Look, I'm just saying don't undersell the virgin birth to say that Jesus, why would he do these things? It was a reason he was born of a virgin. Everything about him was going to be used. The blood was going to be used. You see what I'm saying? The body had to be used. And as far as everything everything about the body, it's one body. It's one. It has to be used. So, with that being said, I hope I have helped you to understand the significance of the blood of Jesus, the body of Jesus, and why he took upon himself the death of our sins, the death for our sins, and you don't have to die to forgive me, and I don't have to die to forgive you, and that, in fact, that is not the proper way to even look at the situation, because you are putting yourself in God's shoes and in the Messiah's shoes. You are not the one that was told you had to die to forgive. So don't ask the question of, am I the one that has to die to forgive? It makes no sense. He said the Messiah was. If you can look in the mirror and tell yourself that you are not the Messiah, then don't ask me, are you the one who has to die to forgive a sin? You already know the answer for that. Now, with that being said, if I have helped you in any way, if you would like to come to Jesus and enter this family, this blessed family. I'm not going to tell you it's going to be either you will have tribulation. I mean, it's something that we, it's something that we have. We have tribulation. But we go through it. And we know we shall be as he is. And as he is, is eternal, reigning as a king. And so shall we be. We know the end of the book. So our faith is strong. If you want to join this faith, bow your head and pray with me. Lord Jesus, I ask you to reveal yourself to me. I ask you to reveal your truth to me. Enlighten me. Come to me and live inside me. And wash me free of my sins and cleanse me for the Father. God, I stand before you and I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I accept this day your son, the Messiah. And in the name of the Messiah, Jesus, my Lord, I pray to you, my Lord. Amen and Amen. Well, with all this being said, until the next time I see you on my show, Your Moment for Biblical Truth, I am Brother Esquire saying thank you for joining me this day and allowing me to walk with you and help you. And thank you for watching my shows because I just thank you for watching my shows. And with that being said, I bless you. May God bless you. May Jesus bless you. May the Holy Spirit come to you and comfort you. And as Brother B will say, may that shalom peace be upon you. Shalom.
in the name of God. Good night.